Welcome to the channel everybody. My name is Ryan and we are back with more RimWorld today. Of course, this is the 1.5 an Anomaly series and we are well into the playthrough. So if you're just tuning in for the very first time, there's a link to the full playlist down in the description. So go check that out because we've encountered several different anomalies. There's actually two on the screen right now. We've got the Sight Stealer and a holding platform. And then of course, this is the pit burrow of uh, Flesh Beast attack. There was only one. It was, <laughs> I was really scared when I saw this thing pop up, but it was actually pretty easy. And I had been waiting for it to just like fill in automatically because it kind of seems like that's what it says. It will collapse after some time. But of course, a commenter pointed out that there's actually a fill button for it right there. Fill in. I don't know if that's active while the attack is going on or if you got to wait. But now I'm going to click it. So big shout out to Kage no Oni for the comment there, buddy. Appreciate it. Also, he recommended that I switch over completely to the hidden conduits instead of like saving the one steel it might take to, you know, uh, go for the above ground conduits under the walls. Because we did actually have a fire, you know, right over here, short circuit, and there was a pretty big fire on these walls. So I think that's a good recommendation too. It's really not that big of a deal. And plus, if it completely circumvents the short circuit event, then, I mean, why not? You know, and apparently that's what he tells me. So we're going to go for that. Um, I'll probably replace the ones in here. But over here, we're going to tear down most of this area and rebuild these as a proper containment facility. Oh, but there's one last thing we need to cover here before we get started. We are currently experiencing a death pall right now. And if you're unfamiliar with that, it's basically like a cloud of nanites. We've got an entry in the codex for it that was kind of surprising, but there it is, the death pall. So this basically resurrects any corpses on the map. And yesterday, when we were looking at it for the first time, I was questioning whether or not it actually resurrects animals too. And it does, because right as soon as I loaded up today to start the recording before I paused the game, there was a notification that this warg right here had been resurrected. Oh, look at that. We're going to witness it together, guys. You can see the nanites falling from the sky, and they will resurrect humans or animals. Shambler warg into shamblers. So that looks like a pretty nasty creature to encounter, huh? Yep, so we've seen the shamblers. Now we know how they're created. So another little layer of the anomaly lore coming in and stuff. Oh, there's a wild boar. Oh, so really you do want to kind of scour the map for corpses of animals. That's going to be a bit of a challenge, but I think today's priority is getting these walls built. No matter what, we've got to seal off the compound for kind of events just like this so we can hide behind our nice safe walls. Oh boy, well the conflicts here in the prison never end. Yep, look at this Willie. He took down Shite again super quick. All right, all right, so he's got Jackie. Is he going after them, or is he heading for the door? Look, 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 Shite's crawling. He's using his little beard stubble to crawl along. His tail's probably helping, too. All right, we got to deal with this guy again. This is like the fourth time we've had to subdue a prisoner, but that's just what you get, you know? I'm going to, let's have Grave do this. Open the door. Grace, get over here, open the door. All right, don't shoot, though, guys. Don't shoot. Let's let him come at you. We're going to use... Oh, you had a chance, Willie. Will you please just open up the door and come through? It's one of the rare occasions where I actually want a prisoner to just walk right out. This way, he doesn't break my door, and we both get a shot at him. So, two on one, much more likely Willie will go down safely. Yep, because he is a hussar. You know, that's what the red eyes mean. But regardless, we've got him. Ryan, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's still recovering from the last time we had to subdue him. Capture, Grace, get in there and just capture shite. There we go, beautiful. So, not a big deal. It's just how it is right now. There's a lot of stuff going on, and apparently I didn't realize it, but the Death Paul gives him a mood debuff, too. Death Paul negative four, so it's not just the threat of the Shamblers, but it's also a mood debuff, and I'm sure that's probably, yeah, the prisoners are experiencing it, too. 
and they're still all on the borderline of being, well, he's not even close to being converted, but these two are on the borderline. Sora is a child. She just needs to be released once she can walk around. She'll become a colony member instantly. But one last thing before we proceed, I wanted to touch on some more mods that I installed. Not too many this time. And again, nothing game changing, but I will try and cover these as we go through mod options just to show off what we've done so mortar accuracy is one that's a good one it changes like accuracy so it doesn't it's it's more like dependent on their shooting and intellect i don't know it's one i always play with so i'm very used to having that active but um our no we did rpg inventory there was a couple that i wanted to mention but let's see what they're not showing up here for some reason i know they're active Okay, well, apparently they don't have mod option tabs, but it's the minify everything and it's the tend here or treat here, which basically allows you to tend downed prisoners or anyone down colonists right in the field as opposed to having them have to bring them back so you can use medicine and stuff. But it's really helpful if there's a, you know, a raider who gets downed and only has a couple hours to live out on the battlefield and you know you're not going to have time to get them back to the hospital. Okay. Okay, well, this is bad right here. Ryan just went on a sad wanderer mental break. It's obviously not the worst mental break possible, but it's not a good one when you got a death paw going on, and I've been getting notification after notification. There are a lot of animal corpses on this map. There's a couple. If we zoom out, you can kind of see them. There's a couple right here. Yeah, three shamblers all next to each other, so I gotta keep an especially close eye out here. If he wanders too close to a group, I'm gonna have to muster Grace and hope that she can get to him and save him, but it doesn't look like he's wandered too far. Like I say, it could be worse if you went on like a nature retreat mental break. That would be devastating there. We'd probably have to arrest him and stuff, but man, oh man, Randy's not making it easy on us. It's hard to believe, too. It's on uh, Blood and Dust difficulty only. Not losing is fun. I feel like this is the maximum difficulty challenge, but, you know, then again, that is just how it is in the early colonies when you don't really have the labor force to get everything built that you need or cooked or whatever. Kind of starts to spiral out of control, but we're going to grab it. I'm not letting this colony slip through my fingers, so I'm going to maintain my iron grip on all these colonists like i say if we need to we'll just arrest him okay well i've got them locked inside where they've just got enough food going right now we're gonna have to go out and send a couple people hunting though but the shamblers are on the map let me tell you i'm getting these notifications left and right so i think it did say if we give enough time they'll just go away or i think i've seen some of them literally just drop dead I don't know. Do they just get resurrected again while the Paul is going on? So much to learn. So much to learn. I swear this boar right here just was passed out or dead or whatever. But he's back. <laughs> Nonetheless, like I said, we're locked in our little home up here. And the good news is it gives us a lot of time to spend with our prisoners. So Jackie is now one of us. Hello, Jackie. Everybody has the same haircut. They're all bald. Let's take a quick look at her bio. Body modder. Oh, yes. All around really decent pawn. No doubt about it. The cooking. We've got like three cooks already, but she's definitely the best. I guess her biggest contribution is the crafting, because now we can finally start to make a few bows and arrows here. It's all we really have the ability to make. I can't make any real true firearms yet, but I'm going to pump out a few of these, and we'll, we'll assign it specifically to her. Of course, I need to... Oh, Sass? Oh, Sass actually has a better crafting ability, but she's, again, also restricted to the bed. Oh, man. Well, as I mentioned, it's possible for them to just become instantly healed by from paralytic abation before the time says, but then again, it doesn't always happen, so ugh, it stinks, but well, at least it gives me plenty of time to consider their work tabs and just exactly how I want to tweak them and stuff. Oh, finally, the death pall is clearing. Man, oh man, we're going to have to go out there and just sweep the map. I'll still give it a couple of days, but it was really inhibiting my ability to hunt. There was a muffalo just outside the doors, and we came out here to hunt it. And literally, in the time that we shot and killed it, 
between he was picking it up and carrying it over here, it turned into a shambler and he had to just finish it off while it was like still changing and stuff. So it was insane. I was really worried about our food. We're down to 10 meals. Oh, so we got to get out here. Like I say, what are you doing? Did you just eat something? Oh, he's flicking the switch. Let's go ahead and we're going to do some manual hunting. Grace, how are you? Ooh, her mood is terrible. I'm trying to really avoid these mental breaks. He's in a good mood, though. We might want to do a ritual too soon, but here's the deal. I, like I said, we got to get some food in the freezer. We're down to nine meals, and now these prisoners want to be fed. But um, good news is Willie is converted, so we're just trying to knock him down here. I am going to change his name, too, by the way. I, I realize it's probably Wiley, not Willie, but he's going to be known as Merlin. <laughs> I should have had a Merlin in my previous playthrough. It was a medieval and magic playthrough, but you never it never works out perfectly here on the rim. It's always something. All right, this could be touch and go here. We've got the shamblers. Oh God, they're so oblivious until you actually shoot them. They are pretty quick though. I remember being just absolutely shocked by how quick the human shamblers were. I don't think these little guys are going to be too much of a threat. Uh, one thing I've noticed with this new run and gun continued is that it seems like they move slower while they're shooting and moving when they're running and gunning, which is actually kind of good. It definitely balance, th balances it out more. It makes it more difficult. And I touched on the last one that the run and gun is kind of a game changer and it de definitely makes things easier. But I should have been that by saying it's not really going to be like the difference between a raid, you winning a raid or not. It's really more effective in hunting animals, especially in the beginning when your people don't have a great amount of fire power luckily we started with his badass uh charge rifle but if you're just using bow and arrows in a tribal start run and gun is pretty huge but there we go we got a little bit of meat and it didn't turn into a disgusting shambler so i'm gonna have grace grab this let's unrecruit her yep there she's hauling it for us she knows the drill she's the cook and ryan's going after the other one so i do need to you know just watch out on the periphery because i'm pretty sure there's still some shamblers about but we've cleared a few here in the home area so i think we'll be okay for now we've survived another anomaly thank goodness well, this is good news. We've got ourselves a trader on the map now, a war merchant, and they're helping us clear out some of the shambler mess. This is actually a fresh links here. We're going to go grab that, but yeah, I'm I'm sure they'll they may encounter one or two shamblers. Let's see. Are there any left now? They might all be gone. Yeah, there's a dead one. But um, either way, the war merchant is going to be huge. I've actually got Ryan coming out here to harvest some of these ambrosia bushes. They're not even fully grown, but I have a feeling we can probably get those harvested and trade those to the merchant too for a little extra leverage in the upcoming trade. I'm hoping to get some guns. Then maybe I can just cancel these, you know, the bills for the short bows. But we'll see. We'll see. I have no idea what he's got, but let's wait for him to get through here. Oh, well, crap. I should have realized when I saw they were a tribal trader that they're not going to have firearms. So uh, I'm still going to get rid of the ambrosia and just pick up the good great bow here from them. That'll be good enough. But um, yeah, it's annoying. But sometimes the trade care of it, sometimes a tribal you know, combat guy will be helpful, especially if you've been fighting a lot of tribals and you got tons of just like half broken spears and bows and arrows. They'll buy that crap from you for a little bit of silver. But regardless, it's good to have a trader here after the death, Paul. Things have really brightened up and it's coming along quite nicely, although mm, the walls are very slow going. Where are you going, Grace? Is she going to hunt? Oh, she's hauling that lynx. Ugh. It's kind of a long walk. And it's funny, she, instead of walking through the doors and then crossing this little body of water, she literally went all the way around the hill, too. I just realized that. But, I mean, that's your choice, Grace. You do whatever you want. But I think it probably would be a little shorter going through the water. I don't know. I'm not going to time it out, though. I tell you what, Randy loves throwing old geezers at us. No offense to anybody out there over the age of 70, but uh, good old Missile has just landed here right next to the colony. He is a waster, which is interesting. Lazy, sanguine, nimble. 
I tell you, that lazy is, is pretty much a deal breaker. Not going to lie to you, but we'll look at him regardless. Really nice mining, but um, on this map with just a hilly map, it's not really that big of a deal for us. We might need some late game when we start sending people off onto the world for different, you know, uh, dig sites. But yeah, it's a little early for that. Now, doesn't have much going on here that promising for this guy. He's got the bad back. Pretty beat up. Now, the question is... Should we leave him or should we capture him? And then, you know what? Definitely going to put him in the tree zone because I don't want to leave him out here with the death pall. I mean, it probably won't happen again right away since we just got over one. But I think ultimately, unless we can get some faction favor out of this guy, what is this faction? The Toxin Pillars. I think that the Waster faction is always hostile. Yeah, permanently hostile. So, like I say, I'll probably just grab him. Oh! <gasps> Can we do a ritual? Oh, uh, I don't have an altar, so it would probably be really crappy. Let's see. Public execution, 18% since there's no altar. Uh, and only one participant. Well, regardless, he will feed the trees. Like I said, we are very carefully nurturing our unholy orchard over here. So the toxic waster is going to add to that. Oh, Stafford has returned, everybody. I nearly forgot she existed. There she is already going to work. Look at her. You know what? Randy has labeled her ugly, but she's beautiful in my eyes, guys, especially with that little heart tattoo. Oh, it makes the camera mod so worth it when you can zoom in on lovely colonists like this. But take a little look at her as a refresher. Masochist, ugly jogger. You know, she and I think we got somebody else who liked pain. But um, I'm thinking we might do pain as a virtue in one of our upcoming memes, but I've really been falling behind with the rituals. We tried a couple and I failed. I've just been too nervous to try more because it's going to send some of our people over the edge if we keep failing and stuff. Oh, good. Ah, so he's dead. What happened to a skull? I didn't even tell him to remove it. He must have been something must have came and eaten on him. Oh, crap. Well, it's, yeah, she's going to haul him. Hopefully over to here. Very good, very good. But I'm glad Stafford's back. We needed her. She's still young. She's just turned an adult. She got here when she was still a child, so we put the jogger trait on her. She came with Masochist Ugly, but overall, good pawn. And now that she's back, maybe it is time to do a ritual. Um, obviously, whatever's ready. Oh, that one performed recently was 1.1%, so it was very close to being ready again. Uh, we'll just have to wait for that one unless maybe the leader speech? Room impressiveness zero. I'll come on with that. Yeah. That should be a big priority, honestly, is trying to put together a nice ritual room. You know, what might be a good candidate is this ancient danger right here. I touched on this at the very start of the series, but we haven't mentioned it at all. There is an ancient danger here, confirmed. I got the little pop-up and everything when we moved in next to it, but I could easily set something up, a little trap funnel right here along this side so that we can pop open one of these walls and anything in it will hopefully come through and hit the traps. Might end up doing that with some wood and they, they just take it down. You know, it's better safe than sorry. So in other words, what I'm thinking of is we could have a single trap or a single wall here and then put a door right here. We'll have a pawn stand here and shoot this floor piece or this wall piece and then we'll put in a bunch of traps like this. Don't need to go crazy with them. But that's good enough, uh, as long as there's not like four centipedes on the other side. But we shoot this out, and then we fall back behind the wall. The door slam closed, and we have a couple of our pawns down here ready to shoot anything that comes out of it. You know, I might add a couple of tiles here, too, just so we do get an extra trap or two on there. It's like I said, better safe than sorry. So, yeah, I'm going to work on that as we continue to construct some other stuff and put Stafford to good use here now that she's back. Shambler's approach, guys. Well, we've seen this one before. We know how to deal with the shamblers. There's five of them. Wait, where are they? I'm not seeing them. Oh, they're up here a little bit. All right, yep, yep, yep. Oh, look at that one. A Hussar Shambler. He looks mean, doesn't he? Yikes. Wonder if he's got any go juice on him. Probably not. No, they don't have anything, do they? Not a single shred. Oh, actually, there is one with the shirt on. It's tainted, though, as you might expect, but 
Regardless, um, we can just choose to leave them. Honestly, they're pretty darn far. So I'm going to, you know what I think I need to do is set up some zones here. I've got one or two ready to go. Let's go with this. I did the nature running one for the kid, but um, I'm going to set this. We'll rename this to a safe zone. I like to do this. We'll just have one zone I can set up that's completely inside the walls. You know, it, gives you, it gives our colonists access to basically everything inside, but they won't go outdoors. So, yeah, and that definitely helps things down the road. You take a little bit of time early on, set yourself up with some good zones, and it saves you time down the road interesting looks like we've got something new here a distress signal you've intercepted a distress signal from a nearby camp and it's one of the friendly factions the frantic voice begs for immediate assistance defending against a threat they offer everything at their camp in return for help that sounds serious including shards of powerful arco tech as the voice tries to explain the nature of the threat, the signal goes dead. Oh no. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. I will go ahead and spoil that. I think it's one of those serious flesh beast invasions, like what swells up from the ground. I might be wrong. I might be mislabeling it, but either way... Time left, 15 days, so it is a timed quest. Yep, there it is, 15 days, camp loot. I want to see this one, this kind of thing again in the future, no doubt about it. But I mean, we're still very much just struggling to hold on here to this colony. I don't think we can go rescue another colony, although I imagine it would probably be relatively weak, scaled down to our level of wealth, I assume, but I don't know. So I don't want to risk the whole playthrough on it. Nonetheless, let's see what we're at. 32k. Alright, alright. I know that the scale starts to really get bumped up above 80k. And I think that's also the level at which the expectations of the colonists become higher. See, right here it says high expectations. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that flips and becomes like a negative to them because they expect like lavish or something anyway not that important right now we're still pretty far away from it but a couple of things we are working on this this will definitely boost the colony wealth whatever's in here as soon as we destroy the what's guarding it will basically be added to our colony wealth and another thing i've been thinking about want to touch on this Boom, the Mechanator. I found the Exo Strider here, so we can get this going, and I'm definitely going to. I think once these two get healed up from Paralytic Abasia, hopefully it happens sooner than 20 days. But if not, we're going to make somebody the Mechanator, because from what I've kind of read and understood, the Mechanator and having a bunch of warlike mechs is almost like the perfect counter to a lot of these anomaly, you know, attacks and stuff. So having a nice little disposable army will help. It always helps, you know, no matter what you're fighting against. So this is definitely something we're going to incorporate into the playthrough. We will have a nice little Mechanator. You can believe this is going to be an advanced colony. I've also toyed with the idea of adding the um, transhumanist meme onto this, but we've got a few things to do before then oh did i just notice we have seven of ten points ah does it just fill up over time i'm not sure because we certainly haven't had seven successful rituals i'll tell you that much but i think we actually did get a point for each time we promoted somebody i don't know i'm still fairly novice when it comes to the fluid our ideologies but regardless if we can probably get that other one going let's check it what was it, the Festival of Life? Yep, it's ready to go. Expected quality is garbage, but I'm going to wait for Gray, uh, Stafford to snap out. Then maybe that'll improve it since we'll have an extra participant. Well, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. It's another prison break, folks. And this is getting pretty old here. Come on, Stafford. She's fine. Just a few bruises. Oh, good. Grace is here. Oh, she's on a mental break. That's right. So she's not going to be any help to us. But we got them lined up, queued up, as the Brits say here. Oh, oh, Stafford fell to the ground. Damn it. All right. It's all on Ryan. Of course, he's wearing the power armor. Oh, shite's down. Okay, shite's down. Good, good. Yeah, take out. Unfortunately, we did run out of goju, so I was very slowly feeding him the three that we had from a previous raid. Stafford, where the hell are you going? But uh, we ran out, so I'm thinking Willie... Oh, he picked up the bow. Look at that. Willie might end up being 
just cannon fodder for this ancient danger. He might end up escaping, actually. Hold on, let's see what happens here. For the love of God. Oh my God, he took Ryan out. Is he gonna grab that rifle? What's he doing? He's making it. Oh, he's shooting. He's shooting at the turrets. He's shooting at the freaking turrets. This is wild. Oh my God, he's shooting at Grace. Take him out, Grace. <laughs> she capped him. Oh, they're just bruised up. I mean, I can't believe they're crawling around like wimps. All right, capture Willy. Get these guys back in here. What a disaster. What an absolute disaster. Oh, and Ryan's just downed himself. You got bruises, bro. Get up, get to bed, sleep it off, sleep it off. Well, like I say, uh, kind of a disaster there. But nonetheless, everything's pretty safe. Whew, man, that was kind of embarrassing, actually. Well, got a little tip here. Something I've learned just in my time playing before. So Randy sent us a caribou, self-tamed. But it's pretty far from the heart of the colony. And it's right next to the edge of the map. So at this point, it's a little dangerous going out there. Those shamblers are gone. But still, I don't really want to risk it or send the people out there and have them lose half a day just walking back and forth. So what we can do is set up one animal sleeping spot that the caribou can access. It's going to have to walk to get to it, but if it is part of our animal herd, it should mosey its way down here once it gets late, and we won't have to worry about walking across the map. So let's just test it. Let's wait till nightfall and see if the caribou ends up here. Okay, it is dark out here, guys. You can see our caribou. Looks like he's making his way to somewhere special, somewhere warm to sleep at night. Let's give him a moment because he is coming around. And there we have it. The caribou is inside the compound without any effort from us. And now I can just walk right out here and slaughter him early in the morning. Oh boy. Well, we're just moments away from shite here becoming our colonist. Resistance has been broken. And of course, literally just moments before that, she has a me uh, mental break and goes on a sadistic fight with Willie, uh, Wiley, whatever, Merlin. But we just had something new pop up. A distant shriek. I don't know what that means. There's nothing to jump to. I haven't even unpaused it since then. What is that? Oh, that's our visitor. A yeah, visitor just left. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So just a couple of little updates. I'm still putting this off. I'm actually waiting for a couple more people to join us. I think we need more people. But I've moved the door back a space. It'll still block this off, and it gives him an extra uh, couple of seconds. And I've extended it. You know, wood's pretty cheap, and it's easy to build it. So as time goes by and I just continue to wait, I just expand it more and more. Plus, these monsters are going to eventually pop out, boom, right over here, whatever they are. So that's good. Our guest left us some glitter world, but I'm going to unpause it. I don't know what that event entails, but I'm scared now. I am definitely scared. Oh, oh, Sight Stealer, Stealer has been revealed. Where? All the way out here? Oh, look at this. Our guest is going to fight him. Should we grab the crew just in case? Yeah, let's bring them out here. I'm not sure. I might have to put together an impromptu holding cell and set up some better containment for a second sight steal. I don't know if there's benefits to having multiples, but you know, I bet you there is, especially once we get to the level where you can start harvesting. What is it called? I can't remember the uh, stuff, but there's, yeah, the bio ferret. That's what it is, yeah. All right, well, we'll grab this guy. You guys are good. Just chill. Fall back. Fall back. Let's get a containment unit up. Psychic ritual spot. Oh, yeah. We haven't quite gotten there yet, have we? Or can I can place this out here. Maybe we can play around with this. Um. Oh, here we go. All right. We'll put it right there for now. We'll mess with that later. But, yeah, we need to retrieve this. So, Stafford... Go ahead and capture the sight stealer. How long does it have to live? Oh yeah, plenty of time, plenty of time. It's lost its second toe, but no big deal, no big deal. So we are on the precipice of definitely expanding the colony here. I'm a little nervous about this Hussar though, just because without any more go juice, and we are officially out, I've been feeding him some, he's gone into deficiency. So we might end up spending all this time to recruit him just to have him die right away or go into catatonia but also optionally we can send out a caravan possibly and pick up a few 
because we're nowhere near the ability to research yet. In fact, I've put off pemmican for now. And I figure, hey, since I have refrigeration, pemmican's not essential, but we definitely need mortars. I know Randy, and at some point, the nice, relaxed pace we're experiencing now is going to be over, and he's going to be hitting us with stuff we can't handle if we're not ready for it. But regardless, things are still running pretty smoothly, albeit uh, somewhat difficult at times. So I appreciate all you guys who have been leaving me comments. That's been a great motivation and a lot of help too, just with the tips and stuff. So keep those coming, even though I haven't popped them up in the video like I did on my previous one. I'm just trying to keep up with the daily upload schedule. So I'm going to just slap together the scenes and add the music and get the episodes out as quick as I can with this series, guys. But I do appreciate you all out there tuning in and hit that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel. Channel. We're going to call it quits for today, but again, tune in tomorrow for the next episode, and I will see you all on the next one.